a pre-sitting meeting after the Supreme Court has stayed his ruling, said to us as leadership that he has not declared the NDC as the majority. Neither has he expressed a constitutional opinion on those four individuals. And that what he did amounted to an opinion that he expressed on the statement by Honorable Kessel Atufosa. At the said preceding meeting, I, on behalf of my colleagues, the majority, inquired from Mr. Speaker whether our friends who were seated to his right would be allowed by him to sit there because that was not their rightful place in view of his own admission that he had not proclaimed them as such nor declared them as such. Speaker responded that indeed certain arrangement of parliament was the responsibility of the clerk to parliament. This took me to the next step of inquiring from the clerk whether he allowed the NDC minority to sit on our seats. He said, indeed, we had our name tax, that is the MPP majority, had their name tax at those seats that we already, already uh, occupied. And that it was not he who did that. So obviously, one was expecting Mr. Speaker to direct the NDC to do the right thing. He refused. Subsequently, Mr. Speaker engaged the Council of States. Or perhaps, let me say, the Council of States held meetings with Mr. Speaker. As a majority leader and leader of government business and leader of the House, I had the opportunity to also meet with them. The understanding I had from the meeting as a sequel to the meeting they had already held with Mr. Speaker was to the effect that Mr. Speaker will direct the NDC minority to sit at their right place, which is the left of Mr. Speaker. That was the understanding I had. I subsequently held, had a, a call from the Peace Council. The Peace Council informed me that they had engaged Mr. Speaker on the issue before Parliament, and Mr. Speaker had indeed indicated to the Peace Council that he had not ruled, neither has he proclaimed the NDC minority, and that should we resume or should Parliament reconvene, the NDC minority will go back to their seats. Several other prominent Ghanaians who for some good reasons I would not want to mention their names, who had engaged speaker on this matter, had also reached out to us, the majority caucus, and assured us that Mr. Speaker's engagement with them resulted in he admitting that indeed there was no such ruling, which ruling would now proclaim the NDC as a so-called new majority. Now, from the horse's own mouth, granted that all these prominent people misrepresented to us, the majority. Yesterday, Mr. Speaker himself, in his press conference in the afternoon, enumerated a number of things. Among them, he said he had not made a ruling. He told the whole of the country that he had not made a ruling. So if he claims that what he did was a formal communication, in response to a statement from the minority leader, then why is he supervising chaos in the House? What Mr. Speaker did today amount to supervising chaos and bringing the image of democracy to disrepute. The NDC minority members were all over claiming that we, the majority, did not attend a so-called business committee meeting that they called. Who are they? 
when when did we when did we constitute a new committee in parliament i chaired the business committee of parliament and when the clerk to parliament asked for the business committee meeting i was very explicit that the subject matter of the recall which was approved by mr speaker is a very matter for consideration so there's no need to have another business committee business committee is to decide on the business of the house on this occasion you have made an application which application has been granted and the items that were approved were the very things to be decided on so i directed that the business the other paper should be printed to reflect all those items fortunately mr speaker himself read the two letters the first one and the second one that amended the first and indicated to the whole country that indeed our deputy majority whip the second deputy majority whip had actually sent those letters to him he acknowledged him as such clearly the ndc is on a war path they want confusion in this country they want lawlessness in this country and all these are being supervised by mr speaker yes it is sad it is very sad and i would want to entreat you the media to call them out to call the ndc out to call the call mr speaker out because what is it what what at all is the issue you have made a ruling which you now say is an opinion we disagreed with you we've gone to another forum where by law that forum has the power to interpret the law we respected mr speaker's ruling in all of these my first interview after his ruling was to the fact that i respect him i disagree with him therefore my colleagues and i were withdrawing today from the chamber and will pursue the matter at the supreme court which matter he was already aware was pending at the supreme court and i will repeat the point i made two weeks a week ago ago mr speaker had assured me in the presence of the second deputy speaker honorable amwakwe siyama in his office that in view of the pendency of the suit although the his uh, the ndc had filed that petition which petition was mounted by uh, harun idrisu he would hear them but will wait and abide the decision of the court. I was fair enough, I was transparent enough to have engaged him as a head of this assembly that because Haruna had raised the issue and to avoid confusion, I was going to the Supreme Court to seek interpretation. I did not go to Supreme Court in bad faith. And it wasn't the case that a matter was happening in parliament and I ran away to the Supreme Court. I ran away from Parliament to Supreme Court to seek refuge. No. I foresaw confusion. And indeed, what Harun Edrisu filed? Why did they set it aside? Harun Edrisu had initiated a process under Order 99 of our rules, which will require a process to be set in motion. Why did they suddenly come under Order 93, which allowed for a statement? When in the history of this parliament since 1992 did a, a statement metamorphose into a motion, which motion now will require a ruling? You see, for you, speaker, speaker is setting the country on fire. Yes. Yesterday we we were disappointed with his non-reconciliatory. Posture. posture during this press conference indeed we the majority caucus call on mr speaker one more time to demonstrate statesmanship we want mr speaker to know that although we were not happy on the day he was elected some of our colleagues perhaps has seen something good in him it wasn't the NDC that put him there for him to do the bidding of the NDC. Perhaps people felt that he could be someone who would bring all of us together. Yes. There are things that we cannot say into the camera. But Mr. Speaker is hurting democracy. 
Yes. What Mr. Speaker is doing is to rehearse what the NDC is likely to do should they lose power, to bring chaos, to cause confusion. How can Mr. Speaker say that he respect the constitution, but he will not subject himself to the dictate of the judiciary? How can you say that the judiciary is, is, in, is in collusion, is colliding with the president, and you mentioned the president as a person, as an individual? How? What Mr. Speaker is doing is in bad faith. First of all, he submitted himself, subjected himself to the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. And after losing at the Supreme Court, he turns around to attack the Supreme Court. His own lawyer, my respected senior, Tadio Sori, in court, argued forcefully that Mr. Speaker made a ruling. And he sought to justify the so-called ruling and even challenge the jurisdiction of the court in entertaining my application. For him, the matter comes under Article 99 of the Constitution and not under Article uh, 197. 97 G and H of the Constitution. To the NDC lawyer, uh, to the Speaker's lawyer, who had received firm instructions from the Speaker, the position of the Speaker was home and dry, was on all fours right, and that Mr. Speaker had ruled and that those members could not come to Parliament. Again, he had emphasized that the right forum was the High Court. Yes. All these points canvassed by Mr. Speaker's lawyer were overruled. The matter was heard in the full glare of the public. There was a live broadcast of the Supreme Court proceedings of that day. The ruling of the Supreme Court has been procured by me as plaintiff. The Supreme Court bailiff has served the ruling, the second ruling on Mr. Speaker. His lawyers were given up to 3rd of uh, November to file their written submissions, statements of case in defense, if any. So what are all these, perhaps I call it ex cathedra <laughs> statement of speaker, creating an impression as though those that those statement is making are an authority on their own. It cannot be. A true Democrat will respect the rule of law. Yes. And that is why we decided to respect him. You know, ladies and gentlemen of the press, NPP, our tradition is to respect rule of law. Yes. It's out of deference to Mr. Speaker. That is why we did not enter the chamber. That we should share in that chaos theater with them. Never. never. We'll do never. That. We will not. MPP will not. We will not. Therefore, don't be swayed by their lies and their propaganda. The chaos they started is what they want to end. We will not allow that. We believe that we have to win the elections right at the polling station and would go and work. Right now, what the NDC has done, basically, are the following one. They don't want Ghanaians to receive their pay, public servants, because they know that after the elections, there will be no budget. And to be able to pay Ghanaian workers, there will be the need for parliamentary approval of uh, the budget um, uh, first quarter, but that will be on account, appropriation on account. That uh, uh, is a constitutional requirement. So that is what they want. They want to stampede it. Two, they want to, again, create a certain impression that Ghana is lawless. Ghana is not lawless. We will not allow them yes. to give a wrong impression to the international community. We will respect the law. Three, all these businessmen, you know, their fear is that under the 1D, 1F, these companies are going to create jobs. These companies will employ people. So their fear is that should these be addressed, it will mean that all their propaganda of unemployment would fall flat. 
so further to frustrate businessmen and drive them away. Are these Democrats? No. Now, there are important things to do. We have the free SHS bill, which is before parliament. Their main aim, their main aim is to conspire with Mr. Speaker to prevent the free SHS bill from being passed. And in an unlikely situation where they see the light of day in the election, cancel it. That, oh, after all, there's no law back in it. Their target, their main target is the free SHS bill. That is why there was a pre-announcement of its uh, laying in parliament. And you remember how they fought against it. So it's an opportunity for them to, as it were, prevent the free SHS bill from being uh, passed. And if they succeed in doing that, to them, in their wishful minds, in their wishful thinking, parents will get upset and then say that, after all, the free SHS was not working. The free SHS has benefited many Ghanaians, yes. in spite of the challenges. We know, as a country, the reforms that have been made by two ministers, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe and Dr. Yao Educhum. These two gentlemen who were assigned to superintend over the education minister, ministry have done so, so well. And the, the outcome of their works is known to all Ghanaians. This is what the NDC want to set back. Thank you very much indeed. I would want... Now, they also made some noise in the chamber. They also may, you know, they double talk. They double talk. They, 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 they do double speaking, double talking. Whenever a person lies, he fails to even be inconsistent. In the chamber, where they rushed to go and sit, and again, the clerk this morning, we pre-inspected the chamber. The clerk diligently arranged our name tax at where they were. They came and they physically removed them. And this is where, with the greatest respect and in all humility and no modesty, my dear friends in the media, help us to shape opinion in the right way. Get the message across properly. Put the, get the message across. They came in there and unlawfully removed our name tax, pulled their, their chairs to our place and sat on our seats. And speaker, the cameras, I was watching in my office, and I'm sure you guys are set up. You set your cameras up proud to Mr. Speaker's arrival. You saw what happened. Let the Ghanaian people know. Now they said our members were not present. They claimed that those, if indeed the Supreme Court had ruled, why were those members who were affected not in the chamber? Because Mr. Speaker has said nothing about them. This is what Kwame Agboja, you know, making that point. Honorable Kwame Agboja said the members have had a favorable ruling from the Supreme Court. So they should have come. Really? If the Supreme Court ruling the Supreme Court ruling is being respected by them, why did they move to the right of Mr. Speaker? My respected colleague Cynthia Morrison is here. I said it in my plaint in court that she remains a member of our caucus. And she's here with us as a majority caucus. Nothing short of that. So I would want you to take note. Now, we look forward to engaging Mr. Speaker in the next few hours and days. We, we, we pray that he does the needful. If he doesn't do the needful, we will continue to rely on the law to get the right things done. The partisan politics that they are festing on us in the chamber must cease, must end. Parliament is a chamber for decent people. Parliament is a chamber for tolerant Democrats. Parliament is a chamber for people 
who want nation building without taking advantage of situations to score cheap political points. We will yield to these high values and high tenants of democracy. Thank you very much. Thank you. No question. No question. No question. Okay. No, no. No, no. Okay, we'll allow some few questions. Okay. Yes. Majority leader. Yes. Majority leader, two things. First, oh, uh, who is going to do the tree for her? There are those who have said that by the conduct of Mr. Speaker, he has gone against the ruling of the Supreme Court. And by his refusal or failure, to actually ask the NDC MPs to go back to their minor side, they might be in contempt. Is that, that the view you share? Yes. And, then, uh, and lastly, there are those who say that if he's in contempt, that would mean that he has breached his auto office and you may even initiate process to impeach him. Well, uh, let's let's engage him. That he's right on both. Let, let's, en let's engage. Let's engage him. Get him to appreciate. Let, let, let's let's get him to appreciate the consequences of not obeying the Supreme Court decision. And let us also pray that civil society and Ghanaians in general will prevail upon the NDC lawless minority to know that decency is the rule of the game. Thank you very much. She is a member of parliament. Listen, listen. Wait. Yeah, wait. You see, wait. I will not in any way attack any media house. But I believe that the discourse, the discourse is a two-way traffic. For instance, I won't mention that station's name. But a station invited me, and when I went for a program, after we had agreed on the issues, they now said to me that a big man from that station says that they should address me as leader of MPP caucus. And I asked that a speaker of parliament has made a pronouncement. Granted, at the first instance, he was right. A superior court has overruled him, so the status quo has been restored. Further, the speaker has challenged the first decision of the court, all right? And that has been adjudicated upon, and it has been determined. So two rulings have come out after his ruling, which he calls an opinion. Is there an issue of who is in majority and minority? You, the media, I want to ask you. So I would plead with you, no matter how you feel, let us all help with the law. We all know in, in the US, eh? in the US, I'm referring the media to something that happened in the US. We all know that CNN leans towards the Democrats. If you watch CNN carefully, you will know that CNN leans towards the Democrats and Fox leans towards the Republicans. But as soon as Trump was elected, CNN put all their biases aside and went straight. In fact, they were among the first <laughs> news, let me finish, to have projected Trump's victory in spite of all their disagreement with Trump's views or political views. You get my point? And I would wa want to urge on you, the media, to do the same. You may be, you may not be in support of MPP. I agree. But being supported. Okay, not desirable. media, But leader of MPP group. ni MPP for. A majority, exactly. and that is the law. Exactly. Mumbua, speaker of Fuma Monka, yes, we are Fuma Monka. Nagana Baku Pene, 
Their end is funny, you know, one person gun a jet to from one country and so are from on the sun is so bad. Dear, dear, dear speaker, dear, can you hear me? Speaker, dear speaker, dear, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm going to call you. Or card your car, you know. You didn't attempt. You catch and say, speaker, what do you want? You have the court. No court, it's a assembly. Court, it's a big assembly. Speaker, see on the ass here. Of a lawyer. I'm a lawyer no call court. I call court some on new speaker said there be the Supreme Court guy no. We are for Supreme Court are from Supreme Court. Every the assembly no. Ghana in national TV. Ena Supreme Court. I can say there be speaker. And yeah, we want to me now be to me. I can say Obi sit. We declare the vacant. Eh, yeah, yeah. Into assembly no. Eh, da yeah, yeah. Assembly no. So be that. Now we are aware. Into about the same. Ena I say Obi kasa sa. Speaker lawyer nan kasa kasa. Speaker, you ruling. Of course, you justify it. Speaker, say more kind. Eh? Eh, man, say Supreme Court corner here one. And you want the right forum. Just say you High Court. Some some man, the lawyer can't even now. Court, eh, then a book go here. Into the other, you expect you are not paying. Say, Speaker, any end is if one becker becker say catch him say there be. Baby, I'm not today. I want to not today. I want to here. I don't care. Ah, and be before. Yeah, for your mark, sir. Ah, for your mark, majority leader, I'm with you. But speaker, why yes, sir? Or better, I want to. Or yes, we want to be on conformity. But now you know, sir, only on money now, no, on money back. On money now, and this answer now, and this for baby baby no, 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 sir. On no, on no, on money now, dream. In your money, you are more. We be sure and draw. Press conference or yeah, yeah, no. Press conference or yeah, yeah, no. One kasa se ope enkabom anakroye. Or attack your manpeni. Or attack your judiciary. Eh, 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 Supreme Court. Eke ka in sem sembe bria. Yen, e san se ye bunu binti no. Yambe respondo. Se ya te di oka. Ye ti ye ye. But yen MPP4. Embrana ye disu ninti. Yambe kase inti ano. Ne ye expect se ende. Or the court assemble ye juma, and then put the obi ano ano ane lawyer ako court no, one ka court one sem kwa, one kase wa ko court. I'm a wedding kugu. And in tino, and then you anu minawa. The ayebe se yekani se. Ye ye be di mbraso. Ye ntu mika eni ni omu koko nto kwa. And this is for the. Omu bi bi a yento kwa. Omu bi bi a yento kwa. Omu bi bi a ni yento kwa. So omu di enyoma besa wa Ghana na Ghana aya basa basa yadi yadui omano yadi mbi bi sisi yada mwasi. Sisi omu nube ansi. Charlie, your your answer. Your Wait, she's one of us. Hey, can you ask for that? Of course, I'm still a member of Parliament. The ticket of MPP. Thank you. Uh -huh. I know how. Oh, you're a member of majority. Majority. What answer? Okay, thank you, Wida. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. The content, no. No, the content will come, and the impeachment will come after the content. Who impeach him? That one. Is. Colleagues, I think an important point. We Patrick has raised an important point. Yes. He, yes. We will continue. We will continue to compel the speaker. To follow due, due process. Yes. We record Parliament. He has come to illegally adjourn Parliament Sinidi without engaging us, knowing that there was chaos. There was chaos in the chamber. And he knew that the right thing to do was to engage us and to get the NDC to sit on his left. He refused to do that. So we would. Compare parliament to sit. Yes. And for the right government business to be transacted. Yes. We are going to do it. Yes. We will not 
Speaker allowed the Speaker to have his way. He's no not a way. member of Parliament. No way. Yes. No way. The Speaker is not a member of Parliament. He presides over Parliament. We, the members of Parliament, determine the business of Parliament. So we'll recall Parliament again. I'm saying that we'll recall Parliament. We'll re recall Parliament. Time. We'll, time. we'll recall time. Parliament. This Parliament expires on the 6th of, of January 2025. Okay. So we have time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>